You have a literal physical magazine. And then you're doing this? Nah, I'm not here for it. Welcome back to the Universal Eye, keeping an eye on the latest and greatest Universal news for you. And before we get started, I just want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button down below so that you're in the know exactly when Universal Studios does reopen. I just wanted to start off by letting you guys know I did receive these tips from my awesome friend, Princess of the Night Sky, my amazing tipster at the Park Post, and actually a brand new subscriber, DJ Cal, on my last video. So thank you three so much for tipping me off and letting me know what was going on with these Universal City Walk rumors as well as with the Disney Springs. I do want to let you know that I am starting off with the City Walk rumors, so I will have the timestamp right here of when I start off my discussion on Disney Springs. The first tip has to do with a rumor swirling around the theme park blogosphere, and that is Universal Studios City Walk to reopen, kind of a soft reopen on May 11th. Just a little background for anybody who may not be fully aware of the Universal Orlando layout. City Walk is a shopping center, if you will, and it is the entrance to the theme park. So you have to come in through the garage, go and park, and then come in, you come into City Walk. It has restaurants, shops, nightclubs, and even a tattoo shop. So you can go get that Rip Ride Rocket tattoo right before hitting that amazing coaster. And as I said, it is the entrance to the park, so you have to walk through it, and then there is a fork in the road that is created by a lake. And on one side, it is towards Universal Studios, and the other side is towards Islands of Adventure. Now, let's get into the actual rumor. It has been going around that the employees of Starbucks and Margaritaville have been asked to come back in for reopening on May 11th, and this is all alleged, and allegedly the Margaritaville employees were told that all of the restaurants will be opening back up on May 11th. Now, if you've been around here, you know. But if you're new here, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming on and welcome. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you stick around. But second, I am someone who meticulously researches to find the truth. Just call me your super sleuth. I am on the job. So I wasn't really satisfied with just hearing, here's the rumor. So of course I went digging and I went through every single article I could get my hands on and I looked to see what they were saying and they were all pointing back to a single article and that is one from Attractions Magazine. <laughs> so of course I went to Attractions Magazine, I went to the source and I wanted to know what they had to say. If everybody else was just parroting them, I'm gonna go check them out, right? I have to say this article was, as you can see here, is incredibly short. Didn't state much at all and didn't state any sources. <laughs> as someone who really is meticulous about finding the truth and making sure that what I am stating is factual or if I can't 100% prove it, I am stating that I have gotten it from such and such a source. I just mm, boggles me that a source as well known as Attractions Magazine and as established and highly regarded as Attractions Magazine can put out an article stating that these workers have been told to come back in as fact when they have shown no proof, no evidence, Universal Studios has not responded, they have not a single person coming in and backing them up and saying, hey, yeah, I am, even as a anonymous source, saying, hey, yeah, I work at Starbucks, or hey, yeah, I work at Margaritaville and I was told to come back in. Nothing. They state it as blatant fact. That is poor journalism. That is shoddy workmanship. Do not put f things out as if they are facts when they are rumors. That is why I've stated a considerable amount of times in this video that it is a rumor. They are claiming that it is fact and acting as if they are the source. I'm not here for it. Sorry, Attractions Magazine, do better. It's just mind-blowing that you can be so established and yet really not seem to care. 
that really irks me because I am somebody, again, who meticulously researches and tracks down every single bit of information I can. And if you check my videos, you can see any and all things that I reference in my videos are linked down in the description box. <laughs> Because I want you to know and be confident in what I am saying and do the research for yourself and not just think that I am the end-all be-all because nobody is. Do your research. It's nice to have somebody recap it, of course, and it's nice to get your, your news in bite-sized information, but not from somebody who is claiming to be the end-all be-all, not fact-checking or trying to fact-check and acting as if they are putting out facts when they're not. I would like to see the receipts. Where is the message? Even if it was somebody anonymously sending in the email that was maybe sent out to the employees, then I would be satisfied. That is all it takes, is an email or a text message or something that was sent to an employee. But there is nothing. Do better. You are a pillar in the theme park community, you have a literal physical magazine, and then you're doing this? Nah, I'm not here for it. So, with all that being said, I decided to continue to dig, because I did have one more tip from my friend at the Park Post, that there was on the Hard Rock website a possibility to make reservations for May 11th. Now, I did check for myself. I'm not sure if maybe they pushed the dates back on the website, or maybe they got mixed up. But I did check for myself, and I will have the, the evidence right here that I did the research, and that this is what it's stating as of today, that for May 30th, 31st, and June 1st, there are openings and availability for reservations. But it is still stating that because of the virus, that this could not be accurate. So, take it with a grain of salt. To me, it just further proves the point that they're probably not going to open until after the date that they set, which was May 31st. This all being said, I also do understand and see where or why or the logic of Universal doing a soft opening. It is very much in their nature, anything that they ever put out, any new lands, especially any rides, anything like that, they always do soft openings because they have learned and grown from the past, and that past is Universal Studios' original opening almost 30 years ago was kind of a disaster. So I'm glad that they learned from that, and it wouldn't surprise me if they did do a soft opening. But because I haven't been able to find any kind of shred of real proof or evidence, I'm not convinced. But I will say that now that this new section of news has come out, I do have a little bit more of a space to speculate and think maybe it is a possibility for them to open on May 11th or sometime earlier than after May 31st for a soft opening. But especially not for them to open all of their restaurants, that would be chaos. Now, of course, as you guys have, I'm sure, already figured out based on the beginning of this video that this piece of information that has kind of changed my mind, just a fragment is the information coming out from Disney themselves, link down below, <laughs> that they will be reopening Disney Springs on May 20th. And this is what they have stated. As we continue to monitor conditions and with the health of guests and Disney cast members at the forefront of our planning, we are making several operational changes. Disney Springs will begin to reopen in a way that incorporates enhanced safety measures, including increased cleaning procedures, the use of appropriate face coverings by both cast members and guests, limited contact guest services, and additional safety training for cast members. We will apply learnings and ideas from leaders in health and travel industries, and we're also talking to our unions as we prepare for some cast members to return to work. They also will be having a limited capacity, limited parking availability, and limited hours. I think that's a great plan. It does come on the coattails of Shanghai announcing that they are to reopen. Shanghai is to reopen on May 11th, which is such a coincidence that this rumor started and Shanghai is to reopen on the same day. I don't know, I think that Universal would allow some time between 
when they started to soft open and when Shanghai would were to open to see what would happen with them and just to see as like the tester as I had previously talked about those ideas over on my main channel Natty Rock I will have that linked above and below I had an entire video talking about Shanghai reopening my 150 subscriber slash 100th episode special and I was really I'm, I'm still really excited that that was my 100th episode. I think it was really awesome. And I really want to hear from you guys. If you are interested in hearing about more Disney news from me, I actually set up a goal on my Natty Rock channel that if on this channel right here I reached a thousand subscribers, then I would finally start my Disney Eye channel. So I would keep you guys up to date on the latest and greatest Disney news. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> I think it's really interesting the correlation between May 11th Universal Studios rumor to reopen City Walk and May 11th Shanghai Disneyland is definitely opening up again. Also to me it's interesting because Universal tends to let Disney kind of be the guinea pig or the kind of the starter on things. On the proportion side it seems like Disney tends to do things and then Universal tends to follow suit. Just like with the announcement of the park closures, Disney came first and then Universal came quickly second. All that being said, I would love to hear what you think in the comments down below and in a poll that I'm going to add to you guys and ask, do you think that it really is so that Universal City Walk will reopen on May 11th? Yes or no? I also would love to hear your thoughts on whether or not this is too early to open. If you think that it is factual that it will reopen on May 11th, if you don't think it's factual that it will reopen on May 11th, I want to hear all of your thoughts down below and hey maybe you don't agree with my thoughts on attraction mag or my thoughts on any of the stuff on my opinion section let me know and if you have a tip please let me know if you want to be a tipster for my channel please let me know in the comment section down below or on my instagram at natty rock especially if you have some sort of a screen grab or photographic evidence for me i can accept those over on my instagram so please hit me up over there and Last but not least, our winner of best comment for last video, and that is Tom. I'm traveling from the UK in October, but I'm guessing it's not going to be worth going, especially if social distancing is a thing. It would just be a half-baked experience. So I thought this was a really interesting comment and something that I can further elaborate with you guys on. So I think that there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to potentially going in October where there probably still will be some kind of social distancing in effect. So the very 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 obvious disadvantage is the higher risk of catching the virus or any kind of disease really in general. That's the risk that you take when you go into a densely populated area such as Orlando and the theme parks themselves. But if there is a limit capped and um, spacing is done and people are actually following procedures, it could be kind of a good experience because you wouldn't have to worry about being sardined in like in a lot of times in the parks or worry about the worst lines ever um, things like that like the crowds section if you really don't like crowds maybe this is a good time for you but that being said I'm not advising you at all to go that is really up to you all I can say and all I have been saying is please do your research listen to the authorities, both the government and the health authorities, and make your own decision and your own conclusion for what is right for you and your family. I personally won't be going anytime soon. For my health reasons, I am at a higher risk. I've said that before. So I won't be really going anywhere anytime soon. That's just what's right for me and my family for now. Again, it's really up to you to make your own decisions and I'm not gonna tell you what to do one way or another. Listen to the advice, come up with your own opinions and decisions for what's best for you. And if you want a chance for your comment to be featured in the next video, please make sure to comment down below. And I always interact with everybody, so definitely do so. I love interacting with you guys and having a discussion down in the comments. It's really fun for me. And I really love being able to put up your comments for you guys and have a fun time with that as well. <laughs> I find that people get really excited about it and it's kind of a really fun way to interact with you guys. But anyways, this has been The Universal Eye. Signing off for now. Don't forget to keep your eye on ours. Bye guys.